What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video here in the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today, I got something special lined up for you guys. With the influx of new players we have here in Appalachia, I figured I would make a guide on about 15 tips that I wish I knew when I started playing 76. So, these are meant to help you, and of course, these tips will not help everybody, so please keep that in mind. These are just tips that I wish I knew when I started playing Fallout 76. All right, but not to waste any time, let's jump right into it. Tip number one is to always join a team. That is right, always joining a team is very important. You're gonna get a little bit of a buff, so to do that, you're just gonna pause the game, open your social button, and then as you can see, there's a few teams to join. If there's not one available, go ahead and create one. Created a team will give you a little bit of a buff, even if it's just by yourself, people will join your team. I don't recommend doing the Expeditions team unless you're actively doing Expeditions. Same with Daily Ops. Don't do a Daily Ops team unless you're actively planning on doing a Daily Ops mission. Um, if you're doing events, the Events team is great for bonus XP. I personally recommend the Casual team. Having that bonus intelligence comes in handy for ranking up. Alright guys, this next tip I have for you is to enable pacifist mode. This will help you disable PvP. So to do that, you're just going to pause your game. You're going to go to menu. You're going to scroll all the way down to settings. In the settings, you're going to go to game. And then you should see it right here, pacifist mode. I have it turned on. If you have pacifist mode turned on, this will disable PvP and prevent you from killing players and other players killing you of course i highly recommend having this set it on it is disabled if you do pick locks at other players camps so keep that in mind if you can't get away from doing that if you even if you're in pacifist mode you're still gonna have your wanted level up here all right guys my next tip for you guys tip number three is going to be do not buy ammo from ammo vending machines as you can see right here Ammo vending machines are extremely expensive. Ammo is way overpriced. Rather, instead, go to a player vendor. So I'm going to go to the player vendor instead, because as you can see, player vendors, there you go, sell for about one cap each. So I highly recommend you not buy ammo from ammo vending machines. Instead, buy them from player vendors. Yeah, you might have to do a little bit of looking for each ammo type that you have, but it's going to save you a lot of caps in the end. All right guys, and that's gonna bring me into the next tip for you guys. Save caps by fast travel into teammates and teammates camps. So I know I was talking about do not buy ammo from ammo vending machines. Well, don't pay the fast travel to camps either. Because if you join a team with a player on it, like this camp right here, this is a guy that's on my team, I can fast travel to his camp for free. So don't waste those caps to fast travel to locations. If you have to get to a location near area and you're running low on caps, go ahead and fast travel to the nearest camp that's on your team. Even join join the team to a player who's closer. Also, you can fast travel to players for free as well. So keep that in mind. If they're on your team, that's another easy way to fast travel for free. So please, please don't, don't waste your caps early in the game. Trust me, you're gonna want this tip later on. All right, guys, but Ammo is not the only thing you want to buy from player vendors. You also want to look for fusion cores. So once you get your lower level suit of power armor, you're going to run through fusion cores like crazy. Power armor is such a big buff for you when you're a low level and you're going to want to run it all the time. So you're going to need fusion cores. Go ahead and check player camps for fusion cores. Trust me, this is going to save you a lot of caps and a lot of frustration of learning how to craft them yourself. Go ahead and go to player vendors. I sell them for about 100 caps of fusion core. Um, they more so take up more space. I have so many of them. I have over like 100 of them sitting in my uh, shop right now. They are one of my best sellers when I have them posted for 100 caps. So some people sell them for cheaper. Some people sell them for more. But definitely don't pay more than 250 for them. But I, I can't stress this enough, don't buy them from vendors. They are going to be really, really overpriced and really expensive. Alright guys, and the next tip I have for you guys is the game does drop contextual ammo. What does this mean? This means that the game is going to drop ammo for the weapon you are using. So keep that in mind. If you are running low on ammo, this is a good way to make sure you get ammo for the gun you need. Just simply use it. 
Even if you don't have many, sometimes even just putting a round or two in the enemy at, when you're in a fight will cause the ammo to drop. So keep that in mind. This will save you a lot of frustration looking for ammo. Another tip for you guys that a lot of players don't realize early on, and it's something that you're going to notice real quick, is VATS is in real time and is not slowed down like other fallouts to where it puts it in slow motion and gives you time to react to it. So don't use VATS if you're trying to take some extra time to figure out what to do. Keep that in mind that VATS is in real time and if you're out in the open you will continue to be shot. So keep that in mind, VATS is not an easy way to assess the situation in 76, although it is good to see what enemies you have around you when you're unaware of how many total enemies and stuff, it will highlight them for you if you scroll on them. Just don't expect it to be put in slow motion, just like Fallout games of the past. Alright guys, here's another tip for you, always check donation boxes. They're always going to have stuff in them, the game does generate things for you in there. And that's where that contextual ammo drop comes in handy. Make sure the weapon you need ammo for is in your hand when you first approach the ammo box. Or I'm sorry, when you first approach the donation box, there's a chance that it's going to put some ammo in there for you. But also, higher level players will leave items in there for you. So definitely stop by the donation boxes at your train stations. There's one outside of White Springs. There's some outside of uh, 76. They're all over the place. So just, just stop by the donation box. You never know what you're going to find in there. It could be something that you were looking for. All right, guys, this next tip is a pretty fun one because I'm going to tell you do events. If you see Moonshiner Jamboree, Radiation Rumble, test your metal, definitely jump in the event. It doesn't really matter which event you jump in, just jump in the event. Even if it says recommended level to be a lot higher than the current level you are, most likely you will have other players join the event with you. You can also check that when the event starts. It's going to tell you how many players are currently in the event. This is going to be good for you to earn XP. Also, some events do have special drops with them. Like, if you see a Beast of Burden event, there's a chance you can get the Holy Fire Flamer or the, or the Elder Mark submachine gun. So definitely do those. I always jump in an event when you're a lower level. It's going to rank you up pretty quick and you're going to earn some rewards that you can either sell for a lot or you can have... A early leap on when you get to a high enough level to use them it's also going to earn you some legendary script as well as some treasury notes it can also give you some meds like stem packs and purified water so definitely make sure you're joining events all right guys these next two tips are going to go hand in hand together and it is going to be scrap as many weapons as possible when you're a lower level you don't have any recipes for anything and scrapping weapons is Scrapping weapons is some of the only ways to get recipes for certain weapons, so keep that in mind. You're going to want to scrap whatever you can get, even if you're not high enough level to use the weapon. Go ahead and pick it up if you know there's a workbench nearby and scrap, scrap, scrap. Never be afraid to really walk around over Clumbered, as this is helping you out in the long run. You want to be able to learn those plans as soon as possible, that way you're set in the game and you can kind of modify the weapons you can kind of modify the weapons as you find one that you really like and that tip's going to lead me directly into my next tip guys and that is stash management is key and i know what you're saying you just said pick up and scrap everything now you're telling me to stash manage yes so in your stash box your limited space you do not want to fill that up right away i know in fallout games I'm kind of a hoarder and I know that's like seems it seems to be the mindset to that you need to keep everything but trust me there are weapons that you will pick up that you will never use again even though you think they're cool and you're going to use them again you're probably not definitely go through your stash every now and then sell what you're not using scrap what you're not using you're going to benefit more from not actually holding on to it if you're never going to use it again trust me so just don't hoard things. Stash management is key in 76, especially the higher level you get, you're gonna find a weapon that you enjoy using and you're most likely going to stick to it. That's gonna roll me into actually my next tip as well, which is find a weapon play style. Don't be afraid to change your weapon play style. I originally started off as a shotgun build and then jumped to a melee build, jumped to a commando build, but my favorite build I've had so far, it's probably not the most effective, but it's the one that I deem to be the funnest one, is a, ener a heavy energy weapons build as well as a flamer build. Those are my favorite weapons to use in the game, so they're just so much fun. They're probably not the most effective, but for me, they are. 
So find find your playstyle, guys. Like figure out which weapons you enjoy using. If you want to be a fully automatic rifle, go with the commando build and just tinker with it a little bit. Don't be afraid to change playstyles, but definitely figure out a playstyle and start working your build to it as fast as you can. The faster you can work your build to it, the more effective your weapon will be. The more effective the weapon will be in game. All right, guys. And my next tip for you is going to be utilize crafting areas. So for example, when you first get out of 76, you're gonna have the Overseer's Camp, which is gonna be right across the street from the Wayward. It's gonna have a few benches there, a weapons bench, an armor bench, things you need to start crafting early on in the game. Definitely utilize these areas. Some other good areas that have crafting stations like that is gonna be like the Foundation, White Springs Mall does have every kind of crafting station and they're in abundance so multiple people can use them at once as well as the easy access to vendors so you can be sell what you're crafting. Definitely take advantage of these guys. It's going to save you a lot of frustration if you're only crafting them at your camp and you don't have the actual workbench for them yet. Also if you join a team don't be afraid to jump to your teammates camps and use their workbenches either. Alright guys, and the next one is don't be afraid of mutations. The marsupial mutation, as you can see, that's why I'm jumping so high, is very, very helpful at a low level. Yes, you are going to take fall damage, so keep that in mind, but it does help you access some hard to get to areas, get out of some, sti uh, some sticky situations early on in the game. So it's definitely a good mutation to have early on. You just have to be careful and do not pop any kind of uh, Radex or Rataway. You just gotta be careful not to use any meds that would get rid of it, like Rataway or Radax, as well as walking through a decontamination sh chamber. You want to avoid that. I recommend if you do end up getting a mutation that you like, get Starch Genes. Starch Genes is gonna, I'll make sure you keep that mutation. But don't be afraid to experiment with mutations either. If you get one, play around with it. See if you like it before you decide to start Starch Genes locking in place, you know? Sometimes you get mutations you don't want and then you don't want to have you don't want to have starch genes on and have three or four that you want and then two that you don't because then you're kind of stuck with all of them unless you have some serums to reset so don't be afraid to experiment a little bit with mutations all right so the last tip i have for you guys today is when a high player is shooting at the ground next to you they're probably trying to give you something so many people think that they're just shooting them to see if they have to see if they have pacifist mode on to see if they could get an easy kill but most of the time, it's not even worth the effort to actually PvP in this game. Most of the time, if a higher level player is shooting at you or shooting at the ground beside you, they are trying to give you something. Be sure to just look around, see if they drop something for you. A lot of higher players really want to help the lower end players in this game because that's just the spirit of the community. Fallout's one of the best communities there is out there for gaming. They all want to make sure all the players have everything they need and level up efficiently. So keep that in mind guys, that if you see a higher level player shooting at you, they're probably trying to give you something. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Definitely check the comment section, see if there's some added tips down there. I encourage that if you have tips that I've missed in this, definitely comment them down below. Let's help those lower players out guys. If you are new to Appalachia, welcome. Glad you're joining us. I hope the game's a lot of fun for you and you decide to stick around for a bit longer. And I hope this video was able to help you with just some, some basic tips that I wish I knew when I first started. But if you guys enjoyed this video or it did help you in any way, be sure to press that like button down below. Guys, be sure to subscribe. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me on this channel so far. But as always, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.